see the same, you know, the same topics, the same issues being discussed city to city to city, the same hand signals, the same gusto. It really blew me away. So I just, you know, I went from there. I bought the one-way ticket down to D.C. on the first week of October, and then just, you know, bust and trained it back. Stayed as long as I needed to in cities: Philadelphia, Baltimore, of course, Wall Street. And uh, you know, then my second, my second wave of trips came uh, when the police brutality really heated up. You know, as horrible as shit got here and in Boston and uh, on the East Coast. That's, uh, what was going on on the West Coast was some, it was a whole other beast altogether. Yeah. So, um... Well, one of the things you described was being in Seattle, and I think this was a few days after um, the old, old woman was, was, well, was, a, was it pepper spray? Yeah, I got there in the middle of the night, the night that that had happened. So, um, but, uh, her name is Dorley Rainey. She's either 85 or 86, uh, either way, an octogenarian. Really one of these badass old school activists. <laughs> um, she, uh... They just, they just fit, filled her wrinkles with pepper spray, man, like, brutal. Uh, this, on the same march, the Seattle police actually also pepper sprayed a young woman who was pregnant. She lost a baby. Uh, didn't get as much publicity because she was 19 and she really, you know, the, she was homeless. This didn't really go out to the press. It was hard to confirm. Um, I had confirmation from her ex-boyfriend. But, you know, we didn't really, uh, I didn't feel the need to blow it up. The Seattle police were guilty as it was. You know, now that that's out there, she's more comfortable with it, from what I understand. Uh, but they're really brutal out there, man. I'm talking about like indiscriminate pepper spraying of entire crowds of people. Mm -hmm. Peaceful protesters sitting in the street, just getting blasted. With, you know, um, there there are some videos that are just they're more ridiculous than they're brutal. They're, so, for example, just uh, you know, 30 marchers just marching down the street, and a, and a cop just drives by on a bike, breaks out a thing, uh, a pepper spray, and just you know, splashes the crowd with it. These are things we didn't really see on the East Coast, so, you know, I really, I broke out, I went out there, and, um, and I saw what was going on. Well, what do you think is the reason why there was so much more direct confrontation between the authorities and the, and the protesters? You know, the, the, these, Seattle, of course, what we, you know, what we saw, you know, 1999, with the, um, you know, anti-globalization protests, Seattle's not having it. Right. And, uh, another city that I went to visit, Chicago, which of course isn't all the way out west, but Chicago never even had a settlement for Occupy. Seattle, every, I mean, I'm, Chicago never even had a settlement. Seattle had a great one. Um, in Chicago, every time that they went to set up a camp in Grand Park or wherever, the police came in and just fucking broke it up immediately. 150 arrests, 125 arrests, and the reason being, you know, Mayor Rahm Emanuel, uh, Barack Obama's former chief of staff, now mayor of Chicago. Um, he, he, they're preparing for NATO, which is in two weeks. You know, Chicago was supposed to have two major summits this month. They're supposed to have G8 and then NATO, which is essentially the military wing of G8. Um, G8 was now moved to Camp David in suburban Maryland. And the reason, obviously, being that, you know, they're afraid of what's going to happen out there. NATO's going to be really intense, and there were more arrests in Chicago last week. So... You know, in these cities, uh, and I'll talk about Oakland in a second, but in any of these cities where the police just kind of swarmed in, this is the message that they're sending, is that we're not going to have it. But of course, you know, these people have a lot of will, yeah. and they're, they're not taking no for an answer. They're not going away, and that's why this is going to be a pretty brutal spring. Uh, as for Oakland, you know, we're talking about a city where obviously police brutality exists all across the country. In Oakland, we're talking about a place where transit police execute, you know, young black men on train tracks, uh, on train platform in front of their friends. Mm -hmm. you know, these are things that aren't easily forgotten. Oakland's a city where, you know, if you know anyone who works in Oakland, they'll tell you that uh, over the years after Oscar Grant, when the, the major protests, people were told to go home from work early. This protest got really out of hand. There's a significant um, part of the Oakland Occupy movement, or just a, a, a political activism out there that is a little bit more aggressive. Uh, black bloc activists, um, who of course exist everywhere, but there's right. definitely a heavy an uh, anarchist contingent out there. And Oakland police, you know, Oakland, I, it, Oakland's at the point where, Oakland's so fucked up that when I was out there, I think I got a hotel room for like $30. <laughs> I'm serious, on Priceline. Like, they, it's the tour, there's no tourism industry. In Oakland? Dude, it's they, just, have, they have Oaksterdam, though. Dude, o Oakland is a lot of good... Uh, I think Oaks are damn just, uh... They, just got, they were just raided last week, I think, They just right? got raided, yeah. yeah. My buddy was about, was trying to go. Um, so yeah, I mean, you, you take, 
you know, and it's actually, you know, it actually looks pretty good over them, but it's just, sure. they can't get their shit together. And, and the thing about, the thing is, when you're talking about a protest in a place like that, where, like, really, just so many different um, factions of the community are oppressed and severely, and where the, the mayor and the city hall just does not work with the community well, Mayor Kwan really looks like a fucking idiot after all of this. Not to mention that, you know, in, in all these other cities, for the most part, you know, like, uh, look at New York. There's Occupy the Hood, working right. a lot in East New York, uh, Occupy Wall Street, Occupy, Occupy Harlem. this, Occupy Harlem, Occupy yeah. Sunset Park, I met people from. And of course, they all work together. My neighborhood. Increasing. You live in Sunset Park? Yeah. That's what I was thinking a little bit. I was staying at the uh, Red Carpet Inn on 39th Street. Uh, we're, yeah, yeah, it's right there off the highway. And uh, so, so uh, you know, but in Oakland, you know, that was just one unified force. In fact, Boots Riley, uh, tweeted at me when I was out there because I was saying how impressed I was that everybody was working so closely together and he's like, no, we've been working together. This is yeah. just a unified front. Um, so every city had its, different, its own flavor, but you know, 